In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Here we are in the week of weeks. We're following Jesus as he walks and teaches in Jerusalem during his final days. Tonight, we hear about the Greeks who are seeking truth and knowledge and are looking for Jesus. It could have been the day after Palm Sunday. Maybe it was on Palm Sunday while Jesus was in Jerusalem. There was quite a stir in the city. First, these fellows, Greeks, see, they get a little help from Philip and then Andrew too. They both go and tell Jesus. For Jesus, these Greeks wanting to see him is in some way a button being pushed. Somehow it signified to him um, that the time had come. The commentaries don't talk much about it, which usually means they don't have any answers about this passage. What about the coming of the Greeks signified to Jesus that it was time? These folks are probably non-Jews. For some reason, they're drawn to Jesus. And for some reason, now is the time for the Son of Man to be glorified. As a side note, the passage does not tell us that they ever got to see Jesus. I imagine that they did. It is time for the Son of Man to be glorified. Glorified can be good or bad. It can be good and bad. Jesus ties his being glorified to being a grain of wheat. You can follow that in the passage. The grain of wheat must die for there to be life. And then comes the phrase. The focus had all been on Jesus and people coming to him. And he is a grain, the wheat that must die. But now we are being directly pulled into it. Those who love their life will lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it to eternal life. That's a tough phrase. We are being included in the Jesus way of life. Whoever serves must follow me. This would be better if he wasn't talking about the cross. But that's what he's talking about right now. Jesus is sacrificing all and telling us to walk with him. And it is clear that his purpose is worth the cost. And what it will bring about is worth any price. But tonight we have to work a bit. Preachers like to make it easy for everybody, but tonight we have to work a bit. And you're the perfect folks to wrestle with the tough words of Holy Week. I mean, you're here. With some effort, and some patience, we can see the result of what Jesus did and participate. We can work to unpack the importance of what Jesus was saying, and it all won't happen tonight, I guarantee you. One of the benefits of Jesus going to the cross and dying on it is us. One of the results of the cross is us. We come together, drawn by the cross, becoming the community of God. As we focus on the cross, we become one. And I think there is no other way for us to be one. We certainly won't agree on a political party, theological thought, common cup or glasses, new hymns or old hymns, or even ice cream flavor, will we? It's the cross where we can be one. We are the fruit that is the result of the wheat falling to earth and dying. And when I say we, I'm not saying you, individual person. I'm saying we. We. And if we think about it, I know we cloud it, our, cloud it for ourselves, but we do understand this type of death. It does not always result in physical death, but it can. 
We grew up with stories about soldiers who jumped on a hand grenade to save their buddies. Sometimes it is a literal death that is the cost of sacrifice. Often, it's the little things that seem so big to us that need to be sacrificed. So when parents have children, lots of deaths occur. The death of much of their free time, the changing of priorities, and too many parents today have a difficult time with those types of sacrifices. And our culture can do much more to support them. To make a difference in the world or in the lives of others, it takes a certain type of death to ourselves. When we pause, we know it's true. It is the truth in the kingdom of God, and it is true as we follow Jesus today. And we model our lives after his journey to the cross. It is not an easy journey to put Christ first and go to the cross for the people of God, putting them first. We believe that it will kill us. Can we ponder the possibility of putting the community first? We all have practice at it. We've done it. You're here. We are taught often that there is not enough to go around. And that's when we focus on the good stuff. We're taught that there's too much danger to go around. And, and that's when we focus on the bad stuff. Jesus invites us into a different reality, a kingdom reality. God is providing and there is enough for us all. We can relax our grasp on things. We can pause our anxiety that causes us to struggle, struggle to make sure that there's enough for, for us, for me. We can trust each other and God. Isn't that the key? Trusting each other and God. There's not as much danger as we are led to believe. Even though you turn the news on today, there's plenty of danger in, in New York, and um, our, my wife's sister who's visiting, her daughter touched base to say she's okay because she lives in Brooklyn. So there is danger, but not around every corner. Years ago, one of my children asked me if I ever stopped to help people on the road. And the timing of the question was perfect because we were nearing a place where I had, in fact, stopped a few weeks previously to help a motorist who had driven off the road. If we're not connected, if we don't help others, if we are never helped, we're not alive. Jesus' words were and are true. If we lose our lives, we will keep them for eternal life. In fact, we will have true life now. If all we do is take care of ourselves, we are not alive. Death is winning the day. It is fitting that after, in our passage tonight, after the Father confirmed and glorified Jesus, that Jesus began to talk about walking in the light. It looks like it doesn't fit exactly, but it really does. It's like his conclusion is just that, walking in the light. When you have the light, walk in it. As we walk in the light, we become children of the light, children of light, the community of God. We are the people of God. And sometimes it's putting one foot in front of the other and taking a step and um, trusting each other and trusting the source of the light. Amen. Amen.